We're back again, Loners. We're back again. We know that you've been so happy seeing our faces every day. And here's to episode 185. Hi, All right. welcome back. It's channel one, channel, channel. You mean episode? Episode, <laughs> episode 185. 185. Thank you guys for coming back to another video. Thank you for liking and subscribing and thumbs upping and giving us high fives and going to the description box, box below and clicking our other channel and liking and subscribing. Subscribe to our vlog that channel, because Do it. Do it. Because I'm sick of telling you. Honestly, I'm sick of fucking telling you. That's all I have to say. All right. So and by me, I mean he's the one that usually tells you. Yeah. All right. So today but we're going to. I'm gonna, sick of him telling you. Today we're going <laughs> to do a video called 10 Countries Where Americans Are Not Welcome in 2024. It's by World According to Briggs. I'll put the original in the description. All right. Let's see where we're not welcome. Wait. Okay. Wait. Sorry. When was this posted? I know it's. Five months to- ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like at the beginning. Woo! All right. Let's see. Let's face it, Americans don't really have the best reputation globally. Whether it's meddling in international affairs or American tourists going to other countries and acting like they own the place. I'm not saying other countries don't have their issues. Still, American issues tend to bubble up to the top of the news feed. Today we look at the 10 countries in which Americans aren't likely to get a warm welcome from the people, the government, or both. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. (laughs) Saudi Arabia. Number 10, Saudi Arabia. Now, Saudi Arabia goes on this list at number 10 because things are changing. Things are changing in a big way. In the past, it was really hard to get a visa unless you were there on a religious pilgrimage to Mecca or something like that. And they've had all kinds of changes, especially when it comes to the treatment of women. The reason I say Americans aren't welcome is because we have a lot of things that we think are normal that they're not too keen on. A lot of it is if you're respectful to their customs, you'll probably be a little more welcome. But like one thing, don't point your finger at things. They have a problem with pointing your finger. So we're never going to Saudi Arabia. No, I don't think you are. (laughs) I did. I actually did hear, though, that they've been spending like millions and millions to be the new like entertainment center of the world. Like they're trying to become like a huge entertainment spot. I can see that. Um, I'm just saying because Brian loves to point. Wait, I might be thinking of Dubai. Never mind. Well, Dubai, Dubai already, I feel like. But they're like really pushing to bring more tourism. Yeah, it probably is Dubai. Dubai, they like throw gay people off roofs. Okay, so remember our last video where it was like faux, what did he say? Authenticity. Okay, I feel like that's something that would align with that. You think so? Yeah. Do. I'm sure someone has been thrown off the roof for being gay, but maybe okay, the person w- just did it because they're I was exa- shit. I was exaggerating when I said that, but what I'm trying to say is that they really don't welcome that. Like, okay, but... That's what I meant. But that they do, like, inflict things on them. Okay. I, I don't think every person's walking around looking for a gay person. I'm to not fuck saying with. that, babe. Anyway... Back to the video. Use your chin instead to point places. Always remove your shoes when you enter someone's house. This is, you know, it's kind of an American custom sometimes. Not everyone is into it. I mean, I've had people come over to my house, take off their shoes as they enter. It's not a thing at my house, but I do know other Americans like that. It's just very much a thing in Saudi Arabia. Keep that in mind. You don't want to use your left hand too often. They have a problem with that. And do not what? show any public display of affection. Don't be kissing on your wife. Don't be too much hugging, things like that. They also don't like it when you take pictures without asking permission of them. Like if someone's walking by and you don't ask them if you could take a picture and you just do, that's, that's a problem. Here in the United States, if you're in public, you have no right to privacy. I can take a picture of anyone I want. I walk outside. They might consider it rude. Yeah, but it's still rude. You could get in a fight here like that. Like, Or someone will just get upset because it's like, it is kind of rude to just go up and take a picture of someone anywhere. I don't I think it's like. that uh, blatant though. I think that they mean even if... You're taking a picture of something else, but they just so happen to be in the frame. I got think it, got it. That seems to be what they're saying. That makes sense, yeah. Like the, yeah. It's not know. illegal. It's not just the people. Don't be taking pictures of government buildings without permission, right. private property, military bases, especially female. But if you're visiting Saudi Arabia, make sure you dress modestly. 
So Daisy Dukes and leggings aren't gonna cut it in Saudi Arabia for women. I mean, shorts on men really are kind of frowned on in Saudi Arabia. Respecting elders is another thing that they really, really focus on in Saudi Arabia. So that's something to keep in mind too. These are all things a lot of Americans have kind of ignored and they've gotten into sticky situations over the years and it kind of gives us a reputation. Ruski. Number nine, Russia. I mean, we've always had strained relations with Russia since the Cold War. Actually, before the Cold War and World War II. We didn't like each other before World War II, but we got together because the enemy of my enemy is my friend type theory. But if Americans do want to visit Russia, there's a lot of hoops you got to go through just to get granted a visa. And now with us helping Ukraine during the Ukraine war, it's made things a little more strained. They suggest you don't visit Russia right now. The Russian government definitely doesn't like like you and a lot of the people are kind of on board with the Russian government. I had a long conversation with a guy that's from Russia and he was saying that a lot of Russians believe all the propaganda. I guess that's true with every country. Yeah. Number eight, Cuba. Yeah, nobody should be going to Cuba. It might be a great tropical paradise, but we've had an embargo on them for so long. That includes Americans are forbidden to go to Cuba. And that's despite the fact we have a military base on the island of Cuba. It's actually considered part of the United States, not part of Cuba. But the United States has had a ban on Cuba in both business and the people traveling there since 1958. Some people do go up to Canada and fly there from Canada and, you know, other countries countries, Americans do this, but it's not advised to go there because if you do get arrested in Cuba, you're getting zero help from the United States government. Now there are 12 different categories that could get you on the island of Cuba from the United States. A lot of it has to do with education and things like that. But if you do make it there, you better bring some kind of cash that is transferable in Cuba because you can't transfer your American dollars there. I had a comedian friend named Ron. That's wild that you can't. I mean, I'm not shocked. <laughs> yeah, I've just, I've heard that the Cuban government really fucks over their people like really bad. Yeah. Um, there was like a very short period of time where I think it was a little easier. Yeah, I think so too. To and go. then it got worse again. I th- I feel like. Yeah, I yeah. had an old coworker. Her and her husband stopped on their way. I can't even remember if they were going to Bahamas or something, and they stopped there for like a couple of days. And I was like so jealous. They, I think you told me that. I also I think I met someone too who went he's like no it's great like there it's just a lot of like hearsay that you hear that it's so bad with Americans but I don't know I mean I I think they're talking about like politically yeah 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 Maury uh, back, I don't know, early 2000s, and he was going to do a USO thing at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. There's a bunch of Marines there. So he's all, oh, I'm going to go there. I'm going to get some Cuban cigars. I'm all, no, you're not. You can't get off the base into Cuba. He's all, well, I'm not in the military. I can get off the base. I'm all, you can't. And he goes, oh, I bet I do. And uh, I saw him like three weeks later. He's all, hey, you were right. They wouldn't let me near the fence. So yeah, Americans aren't supposed to go there and Americans aren't welcome there. And if you run into problems, you're on your own. Number seven, Iraq. Sure, we had a big war there and the place is still a mess. It's getting better, but most of the people there and their government really are kind of hostile towards Americans. U.S. government warns about going there and they specifically say the locals really don't like you and the government doesn't like you and there are still different elements that are perfectly willing to kill you. You can fill out a visa form and all that and they give you no reason. Sometimes they just deny it. They tell you no. I will say the the remember the guy who watched Small Brain American. I think so. His yeah. on his YouTube channel, he uh, actually went through I- into Iraq, and it, I initially when I saw it, I was like, "Oh, it's gonna be scary." They were like some of the most hospital wo- hospitable, oh, yeah, we welcoming people ago. to him. Yeah. He, but he's there, also a guy. There was also, I mean, yes, that is true, but he, there was also a situation where like the day then. He was there and he got up and he said last night, like right where he was, an American was just shot in the head, like randomly because he was American. That's wild. But so, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's like, I'm sure it's like still very scary. I'm not saying it's probably safe, but he had a good experience luckily. And you could see that through the video that people were very nice to him. Yeah. I also think right now things are extra heated, you know? Yeah. Middle East stuff. So, yeah. But again, like, I don't feel like it was always, I feel like there were hot, there was hot and cold times. You yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. To visit certain places, some places. Um, yeah. Anyway. Number six, Yemen. Yemen. The Republic of Yemen is another Asian country that Americans shouldn't be going to. If your friend tells you he's going to go to Yemen, have his medication checked. Seek professional help. Currently, the United States government has imposed a strict advisory against traveling to Yemen, citing their ongoing civil war, terrorism, serious corruption, and Damn. foreigners often find themselves kidnapped. It's gotten so bad there, in 2015, the United States government shut down their embassy and said you'll get no help if you're in trouble in Yemen. Since they don't have an embassy and they really won't have to worry about government, criminals are more inclined to kidnap you and demand a ransom when they know you don't have a government to back you up. This place is dangerous, their government doesn't like you, the people don't like you, and there's criminals just roaming the streets. Now, when I say streets, I'm sure a lot of you, you know, kind of imagine paved roads and stuff. They don't have much of that in Yemen. You got to get into the city to see some paved roads and the paved roads aren't that good. By the way, it's not lost on me how I'm criticizing Americans for being ugly Americans and I'm sitting here being an ugly American talking trash about these countries. I remember um, this guy that I worked for, Mo, he, uh, he was from Yemen. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Number five, Venezuela. Yeah, this is another one that should be avoided at all costs. Venezuela is not like most of the other South American countries. I Brazil, I mean, they've got a lot of criminals, really? but at least you, you know, might be treated okay by their government. There's an embassy there. Argentina is a great place to visit. Beautiful, Ecuador's though. wonderful. Venezuela is known for its corruption and its abuse of everyone's civil liberties and is currently considered an authoritarian state. Mm. Different fact-finding missions have found that there are severe human rights violations and abuses in Venezuela. People disappear there all the time and most people are under the impression that it's done by the government. And they also have political killings on a regular basis. The That's Venezuelan people aren't too keen on Americans and their government sure as hell isn't. In 2019, the Department of State state withdrew from the U.S. Embassy in Caracas. So if you get arrested there, you're not getting much help. And you don't have to do anything wrong to be arrested in Venezuela. You just have to be a foreigner. Damn. Number four, Afghanistan. You know, you really don't have to be up on things in the news or foreign affairs to know right. that Afghanistan's yeah, really not a pleasant it. place to be these days. I'm sure Afghanistan has some wonderful people and great things to see, but you really shouldn't be visiting there. The 1970s was really a turning point for them. They had a president in the 1970s that decided to turn it into a socialist republic. Ever since, Afghanistan has kind of been involved in what they call the Afghan conflict. And that has not much to do with the United States, should say yet. In the 1980s, Russia decided they'd invade. And then, you know, we had our little thing there till just recently. They are big on kidnapping, terrorist attacks, hostage taking. And I'm sure if word got around that an American was roaming around the town as a tourist, you would basically be hunted down and kidnapped. There is no formal tourism industry in Afghanistan, and there hasn't been for decades. The U.S. Embassy in Kabul closed in 2021, resulting in an increased frequency of unlawful detentions. Damn. Turkmenistan. Number three, Turkmenistan. Now, this one's one of my favorite ones. I've been reading up on this place for a while now, mainly because I saw a thing on <laughs> John Oliver about that. I have. It looks so beautiful, but yeah, it's. I think it's by Russia. Yeah this country. Oh, he did not put it in a good light. It's kind of crazy. Then that craziness was reinforced by watching Drew Binsky. Turkmenistan only lets 10,000 people in every single year. That's all the tourists they have. It's the seventh least visited country in the world. Their capital city, Ashgabat, is amazing. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's very staged and it's, you know, one of these government controlled cities where people aren't allowed to do anything. And they have a long history of weird stuff. Their old dictator, they have a new dictator, their old dictator, like Pass laws that people couldn't own dogs. They didn't like the smell of dogs. Only white cars could be on the road. Oh this guy yeah! Decided he didn't <laughs> like the standard calendar, so he renamed all the months after family members. That <laughs> became the official calendar it's North of North Korea. Yeah, I've heard of this place then because I think it's they only allow white cars. Yeah, uh, clearly he just said that. Yeah, I remember hearing something about that. That's interesting. Turkmenistan. Now, what makes this unfriendly towards American? It's not the people. The people seem to be lovely and wonderful. The Drew Binsky video was great. The people talked to him. Everyone was nice. Thing is, you only have three or four days to spend in the country, and the whole time you have to have a private guide. And that costs about a thousand bucks. 
This is a typical post-Soviet Union country with dictators and giant, giant statues. I mean, like 20 stories high of old Damn. leaders and various historical figures. Scimitars and turbans seem to be a big thing with their statues. 90% of the country is employed by the government. So this is oh. pretty much a government country. I mean, everyone's in the secret police or they work in some function of the government. They make it extremely hard to get into the country and they watch you the whole time you're in the country. It's given North Korea, but like maybe a little less. Somalia. Number two, Somalia. Somalia, like Afghanistan, you really don't have to be up on foreign affairs to know that this is not a place to go. Most Americans became familiar with Somalia when they had the whole Black Hawk Down situation. Somalia is found on the eastern edge of Africa, right beside Ethiopia and Kenya. If you look at their coastline, you'd probably think this would be a great place to put a resort. But most companies don't invest in resorts that are in countries where 70% of the population lives well below the poverty line. They have this thing called the human Human Development Index, Somalia is the last one. This wow. is how bad it is in Somalia right now for Americans. The U.S. government advises drafting a will and leaving behind DNA samples before entering the country, just so someday your family might figure out what happened to you. You know when the U.S. government suggests you what? leave behind some DNA? They're pretty sure you're not coming back with a heartbeat. That's insane. If anyone here has been to Somalia, let us know in the comments how it was. That sounds crazy. Maybe they didn't make it back. Yeah. Wow. That sucks. There's all kinds of different, you know, studies and research and warnings. And one of my favorite was it didn't say there's a chance of being kidnapped. It said you will eventually be kidnapped. They have terrorist attacks, hostage taking, high levels of crime, illegal roadblocks where they demand payment to pass their roadblock. What's incredible is 20 feet down the road, there's somebody else's roadblock. And don't be surprised if there's a third, fourth, or fifth in a one mile stretch of roadway. And no, they don't tolerate Karens here, so you <laughs> won't be talking to their manager. They'll just take you out in the desert a couple feet and push your off button. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link for that down below. Also, while you're at it, don't forget to leave a like and maybe a comment for this video. It really helps us. All right, on to number one. Oh, yeah, you're gonna say that. And number one. North Korea. This one's a no-brainer. Yeah. You're not supposed to go to North Korea. You're not welcome in North Korea. We don't know how the public feels about you in North Korea because their government is so overbearing. They won't really let you talk to the folks. This is another country where if you did actually get into the country for some reason and are allowed to get in, you're going to have a guide with you the whole time. And that guide is also a propaganda officer. I watched an interview where they went in to say that their dictator is an expert shot and he's never missed a shot with a pistol or a rifle or a machine gun. Here's what I find incredible about that. I've fired quite a few different styles of machine gun. The whole nature of the machine gun kind of is you miss a lot. North Korea is one of the few countries in the world that U.S. citizens are outright banned from visiting. According to the U.S. State Department, only very specific exceptions are made for even government officials to visit. I know um, Dennis Rodman you remember him. He actually is allowed to go into North Korea. Why? Because he's friends with Kim Jong-un. He loves him for some reason. Yeah. It's but weird. How would, whatever. Keep going. North Korea. Now, currently they have a travel ban. That might be lifted. Who knows? It was lifted prior to, I guess, the Trump administration. Sometimes they lift the ban, whatever. But right now, you're banned from going there. And if you are there with the guide, you have to get approval for almost every single picture you take. I read one story about there was a German guy there and he tried to take a picture of the building. They made him delete it and then they put him to another area so he could get a better angle of the building. They weren't upset about him <laughs> taking the picture. They just figured the lighting wasn't right and it made it look bad. Propaganda at its finest. All right. All right. Well, none of that was actually shocking, to be honest. Yeah, those are just some places that I never really like think of well i just don't think to go to but yeah. yeah but i mean i don't know i yeah it's just everyone's experience is going to be so different because like this one youtuber i watch he loves venezuela it's like his favorite place i don't know why like okay growing mm. up i i don't think i had any type of bias towards any of these places yeah no venezuela specifically oh, oh. and majority of my adult life i've only heard like negative things like don't go there this and that but not even from people that 
I know don't travel. It's people that I know do travel say they don't go there. That's weird. So that's where I'm like, damn, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't really heard much about it. Obviously, I heard there's crime. There's crime everywhere. But um, I just, because I watched that guy. His name's Timmy Carter on YouTube. And it's like his favorite place. But he also is in love with like the type of music, the people. He, he speaks Spanish like really well. He's from Greece. Okay. But he's just like this tall Greek dude. But, uh, and he yeah, like, it's right. like, exactly. And he loves it there. But yeah, I don't know. Um, Somalia, I would definitely. He's also definitely, not from America. So yeah. that's probably why he has. They better. all think he is when they meet him though. And then he starts like saying, I'm from Greece. Yeah. Somalia, I only know because of, uh, that movie with Tom Hanks. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. The pirates or took over his boat, whatever. But I feel like what he didn't mention was a lot of the Middle East reason why was because of what we took part in over there. A lot of them have there. good reason not to want Yeah, that's there. what I would think. Yeah, I don't know. But, all right. Anyway. All right. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed that video, guys. And jump over to our vlog channel. If you're from any of these countries, by chance, give us your little take. Yeah. I that's a good know. point, too. Or if you're from wherever and you've had good experiences in these places, let us know, too. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye. See Thanks you on the watching. next one.